Bum, bum, ba dum bum, ba dum Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to Game of Dwarves. No, wait, that's a different game. Welcome to a intro video to our new Dwarf Fortress series, where we will be playing as House Grey Dwarf in this Game of Thrones-inspired theme for our particular Embark. So, a lot of people have been asking for more Dwarf Fortress. I mean, people always want more Dwarf Fortress. So that's not really a surprise. We haven't really explored the, uh, the new... Uh, version that came out uh, a few months ago either. We've been waiting really for a lot of the third-party tools to be updated, just that quality of life stuff that has been there. But I think it is time to go and take a crack at this. And I've decided to go with a bit of a theme this time, and I'm making this video to introduce uh, people to the idea of the theme because I'm sure there's going to be some questions during the live stream, so we can just point them to this. So we are going to be inspired, as I said, by House Greyjoy from the uh, Game of Thrones uh, Song of Fire and Ice series, uh, and they are a group of uh, people, I mean, in, in the show, in the setting, um, they are, you know, like islander boat people and things like that, and obviously that part doesn't really work in Dwarf Fortress, but their house motto is, we do not sow. They do not farm. They don't plant crops or harvest or do anything of that nature. Um, presumably, they probably do some fishing. I suspect that's probably the case since they are like boat going people. But a lot of what they do is actually they go on like Viking style raids. They go pillaging and they take from others, which actually leads into their other saying. I don't believe this is their motto, but another saying that they often say is uh, about they, they reference paying the iron price as opposed to the gold price. And what they mean by this is. Um, not purchasing things, which would be, you know, the gold price, but rather taking things by force, by the, by the iron of their weapons, for example. And so we're going to try to play up to that. First, we are not going to sow. We are not going to farm, which already makes things incredibly difficult. Uh, with, you know, a handful of dwarves might not be too bad. If, if we get a lot of migrants, food is going to start to become a real issue, and it'll be interesting to see exactly how that goes. We will do some hunting. We will do some fishing. And in the case of a dire emergency, I, I may allow some berry picking, although that would be... I mean, that, that, would, that would feel pretty terrible, you know, that, I mean, obviously we're going to avoid that at all costs, but I will not, no matter what happens, I will not plant anything, not allowed whatsoever, we are not going to make fields, we're not going to plant, um, so that'll be interesting, uh, and then the second part of it is the whole idea of paying the iron price, well, I thought, okay, you know, in, in, again, in the context of the, the setting of, you know, Game of Thrones and all that, um, the implication there is that you don't buy stuff, you just take stuff. And um, I was like, okay, fair enough, you know, when the, uh, you know, traders come, when merchants come, we just take all their stuff, which is honestly already sort of something that we tend to do, especially with the elves and often with the humans as well. And so I was like, ah, do I go and also assault any dwarves that come by and just take their stuff? Um... But I think I'm not going to do that. I'm still going to trade with dwarves. And the reason for that is one of my favorite things to do. One of our one of our sort of memes in here, one of our shticks that we do in Dwarf Fortress, of course, is to create a mug producing industry. We sell commemorative mugs, souvenir mugs to people as, as our trade value. And it would be still fun, I think, to keep that concept going here in our run as House Greyjoy. But I'm going to set a rule that we can only sell mugs made out of iron. We are going to have an iron mug industry, and that's what we're going to sell. The inspiration for this, by the way, um, actually came from someone who had uh, tweeted me some stuff on uh, on Twitter ages and ages ago. Um, from There's a website that you can use. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. I should have had this ready. Uh, uh, random game generator website. What is it? Scenario generator. There it is. Scenario generator.net. And um, there's a bunch of different games on there, and you can use it as a way to like give you give you a concept for how you might want to play a game. They've got a thing like that for Dwarf Fortress, and there's a little bit of stuff in there that sort of led me in this direction. So that was the the source inspiration to go on there. Anyway, um, so that's the, that's the setup that we're gonna play with. So. I had to go and pre-generate the world and also do the embark because I had to make sure that we ended up somewhere that had iron. It would be pretty crazy if we started to play and we had this whole, like, this great theme and it turns out there's no iron here. So I generated a world with, um, it's got, uh, it's got high frequency of minerals and I made sure that our embark location, uh, and I can pull it up over here. If you do a, this is in DF hack, if you do a prospect all, It'll give you a list of all the minerals and everything that's on your map. And 
Uh, we've got Late Night and uh, Butimus Coal, which is actually going to be very, very, very handy. Uh, but that's not the one I was looking for. It's, um, yeah, up here. We've got Magnetite, Limonite, and Hematite. I think those three, and I think only those three, are our iron-bearing ores. We've got three different iron-bearing ores, uh, which is great. And you can see they start um, at around Z level. So between sort of 105 to uh, 111 is where those span. And you can, if you look at the bottom right corner, that number there, we're currently on Z level 116. So if we just drop down by 111, if we mine down this far, we should be able to hit iron quite early because it's going to be a priority, which is which is great. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to mine down to there and then do a couple of exploratory tunnels and see about finding some iron and try to set up our mug industry because we're going to need mugs being produced by the time the fall comes, which is not very far away. We are, the, you know, you start early spring, but in fall is when the Dwarven Caravan comes and we would like to trade with them because we're going to be desperate to buy more food, not to mention booze. Um, I'm gonna, you know, we, we can brew booze, but you do need, you know, vegetable and fruit to do that, which means we um, are gonna probably have to trade for that sort of thing. So we are gonna be desperately interested in getting some iron mugs up and running by that point so that we can sell them to the dwarves. Um, and if we get really lucky, maybe a human or an elven caravan will come by and we'll just take all their stuff. But there's no guarantee that that will happen, so um, we might be in a bit of a rough spot. Let me introduce our starting dwarves over here. If I open up, actually, even before I do that, what I could do, um, what is, if I open up the legend browser, is that the one I want? Nope, that is not the one I want. It's probably the other one that I want. Uh, one second here. Uh, da, 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 da. Legend viewer. Yeah, there we go. Legend Viewer. That's the one we want. And did I still need to go and assign this? One moment. Let me make sure that we've got our Legend file selected. I've got to make sure I've got the right version of Dwarf Fortress here. Um, which I go to my desktop. I can open that. And then here. And then there we go. And open that. Great. So we're just loading in. I exported everything from the Legends view so we could have some information in game about the world and our gods and whatnot. Ooh, this takes a really long time to load. Okay, well then let me go over to Dwarf Therapist then and introduce you. We've got BLC303 over here, who is our, our smith, is the profession name we've given them. You can see that they are, uh, they have armoring, weaponsmithing, furnace operating, black uh, or metal crafting, blacksmithing, um, as, as their skill set. I think that's all the skills there. A little bit of wood burning turned on, like just a token little skill over there to make sure that they can get started. So, because obviously it's going to be very important for us to be able to work metal very early. So I made sure we had a dwarf with a certain amount of skill. It'll be quite nice actually to be able to specifically have slightly higher skill with the, um, the armor and weapon crafting over here. I think we'll really appreciate that. Next, we've got Selimin over here. Selimin, what's your actual profession listed as over here? Uh, cook slash jeweler over here. You can see decent amount of cooking skill. So hopefully we can make some good quality meals as you know, even though we don't have a whole lot of stuff and you've got the gem setting ability. Apparently gem cutting doesn't factor into like final quality, but gem setting does. So we can stud our mugs with um, some gems to increase extra value. Um, so we have to sell fewer mugs to get more stuff, which is good because, you know, we can't just cut mugs out of stone anymore. We're going to need the material, which will all have to be smelted. We're going to need iron bars, so that's going to be time consuming. Gorash over here is our carpenter slash brewer. We've got Maelstrom Pandish, who is our mason. And is that all? It's all here. Token little amount of uh, architecture skill, but not really anything that matters. Suntan Man over here is our doctor. Just a token amount of skill in a variety of different categories here. Um, I also tried to pair their um, their skills with their actual criteria over here. Um, where would we see? No, 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 no. Generally asked am I. Yeah, it does not have any of their physical descriptions over here. It's got preferences. I did try to uh, match their um, their personalities to other things. Uh, Tigers and Red Sox is our hunter over here. A bit of trapping, uh, butchery, and tanning. And actually, if we go over to the military tab, Tigers and Red Sox also has um, the Mark's Dwarf ability. And unfortunately, 
uh, has some negative modifiers here because you are quick to tire, which is really too bad. But uh, most of our dwarves had negative uh, physical modifiers. That's the problem. But Suntan Man, which is our doctor over here, had... Um, actually, I guess these are not particularly relevant either. I don't know. I'm not sure why I went that way. Um, and Zervian over here actually has armor user skill that we assigned, and I think was going to be another fighter type person that we we're going to keep around. Uh, so not a whole lot of skills. They'll just do hauling and probably some mining and stuff early on, which is going to be fine. Uh, I didn't give anyone the actual mining skill. Um, it does mean we'll mine a little bit slower at first, which is unfortunate, but you do get to get that skill pretty easily uh, and for free. And so that's it. The, the two people... Um, I guess we don't have anyone with high endurance at all. We have some people with, like not crap endurance because those are apparently the ideal miners because miners really tiring job and normally would have to um could rest quite often so uh where is can i get big map of the world yeah there we go so we are actually right down here can i scroll this around can I number how do i pan this view that's kind of annoying Oh, I just left click. There we go. Okay. We are right over here is where we live. Um, and uh, if we toggle the civilizations on, there we go. We are not far from a human village, which might mean we'll interact with them more. And if we piss them off, we may get some more sieges. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, we're, we're a little bit away from the, the more populous continent. But this seemed like a pretty good place to settle. I think it's got, um, it, I think it's neutral surroundings of like medium intensity, I believe. Something of that nature. Uh, once we start playing the game, we can also take start taking a look at things like um, uh, deities. Uh, is that not here? Civs and entities. Is it historical figures, maybe? There's a way to find, oh, deity, there we go, dwarf deity, for example. So we can you know, start to look at some of these, these things for different characters in the Legend Viewer as we play the game. So that might be kind of fun to do. Uh, so I guess that's it. That's that's our introduction to the game. We are going to be playing this on stream. Again, this will be starting on April the 23rd, Saturday, April the 23rd at noon. I mean, we always stream Saturdays at noon, uh, but this one will be... Dwarf Fortress, and I wanted to do this little intro. Uh, what I'm actually thinking about doing is uh, maybe going and pre-setting up what the mining will be. I'm not going to actually like unpause the game, but we could go and set up some of our plans here. So if I go and drill this down to Z level 111, so this is 111 over here, and I think I might just go and make the exploratory tunnel first. Whoops and then come up with our sort of structure, we might sort of try to grow organically. That would be interesting, rather than, you know, set up a uh, uh, a predefined template. Since we're gonna be prioritizing carving out stone so much, we might wanna go and just whatever natural caverns we might find in the digging, see what we can do with that. I'm not sure. We are going to need to move stuff downstairs to the stockpile quite early. We are also going to need to make sure to get our manufacturing up and running relatively quick. Do I want one central staircase? Because the last few times I've done, like, you know, the four staircase kind of combo. We've also dabbled with having, you know, basically everything on a single level. But we might want to we might want to change things up a little bit more than that, which is interesting. I don't know. I have, like... Something like this for the initial set of stockpiles. Again, if we do this, we're not really paying attention to the natural caverns we're going to form from the mining. But for our, our core, we may not want to do that. Just do something like this. Like this. Like this. And these, these will be stockpiles. And then we can have adjacent to these, the um, areas for our workshops. And especially if we actually, like I like making big Omni stockpiles, but what we might want to do here is actually have the stockpiles match up with um, whatever factories, whatever workshops are adjacent to them. So that they sort of make sense with each other. I know these like hallways don't line up, but Part of what I was doing is trying to minimize so anyone who is hauling stuff can get up and down the stairs to the stockpile quite easily. 
is is the goal there. Well, I guess what I could do is go something like this instead. Instead of going with four-way symmetry, we just go with mirrored symmetry. That might work. You know, just, just something that's going to be a little different than what I often do. What's centered here? Is that centered? Right, I guess it's not going to be centered because of reasons. But that's going to be fine. I mean, we could make it centered for things, but again, we've got the, uh, the mirror symmetry, so that's okay. Get that going there. This here, we might not want to dig out all these rooms simultaneously, because we might want to actually ensure that some of these rooms get finished. And then we can consider each one of these quadrants and like put uh, workshops that make sense together in an area. There we go. And then still do something like if we grabbed this tunnel that way. Oops, sorry, I know that was really loud on the keyboard, my bad. And then another tunnel, say over here, and then continue on. This is probably gonna find something somewhere, I don't know. Uh, and the expectation that this will be like a normal a normal tunnel later on, but for now we can just do something like that. Um, and then, you know, hopefully find some resources, because this level will have it. I mean, there might be some right in the middle, too. Who knows? And that'll be a decent start, and we can start producing that. Uh, we are going to need some trees, that's for sure. We always need some. Um, I don't want to cut down too many, because we don't need a million of them early on, but you do need enough for the bed and whatnot. So set up something like that. What kind of wildlife we got kicking around here? Mm, nothing so far. Did come with a... Oh, very nice! A mated pair. This is These are the things that were just hauling the wagon. And we happened to get a pair. No, I don't have any um, I don't have any pets. I don't have any cats or anything like that. I used all the embark points to try to get as much food going on as possible. Oh, uh, we could set up our... Um, some of our roles. Chief Medical Dwarf, obviously, would be a Suntan Man. And Broker, Zervian, seems to be okay for that. And then Suntan Man as... Oh, yeah, our Bookkeeper. Bookkeeper will keep the... the Medical Dwarf busy most of the time, because he's not actually going to do that much. Um, Zervian can be our broker and our manager. That's fine. We don't really need the other roles assigned. We've got an expedition leader over here, too. All right, that's looking pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, you know, stop here. But do make sure to come out to the live stream. I think it's going to be great playing some Dwarf Fortress again. See you there, folks. Bye-bye.